In this video, we're going to be talking about peripheral arterial disease. So peripheral arterial disease, what this is, is it's talking about the peripheral arteries. So what that would be is the arteries uh, primarily at this point in the legs, okay? And what's happening is there is a buildup of um, plaques as well as the arteries are, are stenosing and getting tighter. And so what happens is it decreases uh, the ability for these arteries to allow blood to the foot and to get the proper blood supply uh, to the foot and to the legs. And uh, what put these patients at risk is the same thing that put a patient at risk for heart, uh, heart disease, uh, which would be diabetes, because diabetes uh, can increase the amount of triglycerides in the body, and so that may increase the risk for developing those plaques. Uh, hypertension and hyperlipidemia. Uh, hyperlipidemia being increased lipids running around the blood causing plaques. Okay, Hypertension damaging the vessels and then they become tighter and they don't allow the blood to go through quite as often. Uh, smoking constricts the vessels. Obesity, uh, well primarily there may be hyperlipidemia or diabetes with obesity but also just the increased weight putting pressure on those vessels. Uh, age, just because over time chances are that more likely you'll have had more time to develop plaques or a family history. So what are signs and symptoms of peripheral arterial disease? Okay, so you're having decreased blood flow to your feet and to your legs. And so what happens is you're having ischemic pains, okay? And, and uh, these pains at first are gonna be intermittent and that's what they call intermittent claudication pain. And so what happens is uh, when you're at rest, you have no problems, but when you're up and you're moving and you're walking and then you start jogging or you're doing activities, uh, once the the blood is no longer able to pump it, your your there's needs for oxygen start to surpass how much blood it's actually getting to your legs uh, once it gets to where there's not enough oxygen you're gonna have pain okay and because you don't have enough uh, blood you, your legs are gonna be numb and you'll have a burning sensation almost like your your legs fall asleep um, you're gonna have a bru or you could have a bruit over your artery what this is you take a stethoscope and you listen to the artery and you could actually hear where the blood's rushing by a plaque. You'll hear the shh, 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 and you can hear, hey, there's a clot there. Uh, you can feel decreased pulses when you're checking the pedal pulses on the foot or, or a posterior tibial pulse on the angle. Uh, there'll be decreased hair because there's less nutrients and, uh, and supplies going to the leg, so you don't have those nutrients that can produce hair in the legs. You, you can have uh, mottled skin and thick toenails in that extremity. Um, the leg is going to be uh, cold and cyanotic because there's not enough blood there, so it's going to feel cold and maybe pale. Uh, you'll see when you have the leg elevated, it'll go pale because um, the blood is able to make it through the heart, through the leg and back. But when the leg is down, uh, or you can see you can see the redness going back through the leg because gravity's assisting it. Is what I mean to say. Uh, this is a little bit different than say peripheral vascular disease, in which case the leg is like brown. Okay. So, diagnosis. In this case, they can do the exercise test where they can check for the intermittent claudication. I told you it starts off to where it's not hurting all the time, just when you're up and you're moving. Eventually, it can get bad enough to where it's all the time. At that point, you may need surgery at that point. But, they're going to go ahead and they can do the exercise test. And then, to actually look at the vessels, they can do a Doppler, which is like a, almost like an ultrasound. Uh, but, but, if they're listening for the sound, they listen for the blood flow. Or an arteriograph. And this is where they're going to look at the veins and they're going to say, okay, here's the clot, here's how bad it is. If it's bad enough, they may need to do surgery and actually pull the plaque out or put a stent into the leg. Um, if not, uh, they may just discharge the patient on statins, which are medications to lower the, uh, the cholesterol and lower the fats that could lead to plaque formation. Or they may leave them on antiplatelet medications such as like aspirin or Plavix, which is going to keep from uh, developing blood clots in those tight, narrow spaces in those arteries. Patient education, how do you, you put the legs up or down? This is peripheral arterial disease. And so as you can see with the A, you put the legs down because that's going to help gravity to get the blood where it needs to go. Now it does say you can't elevate it as needed for swelling, but primarily legs down. Uh, a diet low in fats, uh, exercise gradual to the point where it hurts, go ahead and take some rest, exercise some more. Warm socks to help with the cold. And avoid tight clothes because you don't want tightness to hurt to limit your chances of getting blood through those vessels. Alright, so this is peripheral arterial disease. And just a reminder here, 
legs down, A, arterial, and peripheral vascular disease is a V, you want the legs up.